analyst Mark Anion on standby to give us an in-depth analysis of the restart of the NBA. Good morning, Maka. Good morning. How are you this morning? Very well, thank you. It's been a minute since I saw you physically. How are you doing? I know. I'm doing fine. I think we're all connecting in this season right now. Um, a lot of uncertainty. I'm good. All right, great. Now, um, let's talk about the restart of the NBA. Um, it took a while for us to get to where we are. You know, there was a back and forth between mm -hmm. the Players Association and the NBA Board of chair Chairmen here themselves. And also, talking about the players, look, some of these players did not want to return. We have a few players who are not going to be taking part in the restart of the league due to family reasons. So, how did we get to where we are today? So, I mean, there's been a lot of back and forth in the last few months. Um, you have players that really want to play, you have players that are quite apprehensive because of the pandemic. Um, but everyone wants to see a winner, although some people say it will be asterisk because of the conditions around it. Um, but we're here, you know. Um, they're planning to tip off on July 30th, as you know, 22. The major concern right now is how do you keep everyone healthy? How do you, if there's an egg, uh, outbreak, or how do you control it? Between June 23rd and June 29th, they were testing um, players, and 25 players tested positive. So now when you have 25 players testing positive, how do you um, manage that? The players are flying in. Scrimmages are supposed to start July 22nd before the actual tip-off. And there are a lot of measures they're putting in place to curve, you know, outbreaks. And if a player is testing positive, what needs to happen? They can now join okay. the camp in Orlando. But there's still just a lot of uncertainty because every day something is changing. Every day someone is popping up positive. Uh, they did say that once the players land, there will be a quarantine for 48 hours and they will have to pass two tests upon arrival until, um, until they can start to play. So um, it, it, it's very uncertain how this is going to be. Um, I think it's kind of, it's new for everyone. So okay. it's, it's seeing how it goes kind of thing, I believe. So some people think it's going to be disastrous. Hmm. Others believe that to be able to manage it, I think we just have to take it one day at a time. All right. Now, Maka, I need to ask you, do you think that the current health measures put in place are good enough for these players? I mean, some said, look, they're not going to compete anymore throughout the season because of family reasons. Look, they don't want to spread the virus to their family members. But now, you know what? The NBA has put certain safety measures in place to ensure the safety of the players. Is this good enough for us to have the restart of the NBA? So I think it is. I mean, if you look at the Premier League, they're also taking some similar measures, um, you know, no crowd, um, staying in controlled places. I think if they can manage the in and out, you know, especially with staff, they did say staff will also be on, on site. Um, you know, they're going to do hand sanitizers, um, protective masks, everything, all the protective measures that we know the CDC has that should be taken. There's also going to be um, an education virtual seminar that each player would be mandatory to attend before flying into Orlando. So I think they're going to take a lot of precautions and education what the players need to do to keep themselves safe and prevent spread, even if there is a, someone who shows symptoms or there is a breakout. So I think they are taking it very seriously and they are trying to find a way to curb this and allow this to continue. Okay, so now let's talk about one of the shock moves so far in terms of you know signing players for the restart of the NBA. Now, mm -hmm. former Cleveland Cavaliers shooting guard J.R. Smith has made a shock return to the NBA after a year-long absence. On the 1st of July, the Lakers announced their long-anticipated signing of Smith as a substitute player 
for the um, yeah for the injured Avery James. Now the first day allowed under the rules of the NBA's summer restart. Now Smith is the Lakers' replacement for Avery Bradley, who cited family reasons last week for his decision not to finish the season with his team in Orlando. The 34-year-old Smith hasn't played in the NBA since November 2018, but the 20 but the 2013 sixth man of the year is a longtime trusted teammate of LeBron James. Bradley was a starter and a key role player in his first season with the Lakers averaging 8.6 points per game and playing solid wing defense. But the Western Conference leading Lakers also excelled while Bradley missed 13 games due to injury, with Contavious Caldwell Pope capably filling the role. During their four years together with the Cleveland Cavaliers, they won a title, and I'm talking about James and Jera Smith, and reached four consecutive NBA finals. Smith is a 15-year NBA veteran whose perimeter defense and three-point shooting fit well into the Lakers' plans, even if he's likely to play only a supporting role in Orlando. Now, Maka, did you see this coming? Um, I don't think anyone can. I am happy for Jera. You know, he has spoken about his period of depression. He had stress. didn't even want to think about basketball, anything related to basketball. He's a, you know, he likes to play video games, but even, he couldn't even play any basketball video games. So I think this is a good move for him because he needs to step out of that place of where he was. And he's an, a great player. Um, we don't take away from his achievements. He was side by side with LeBron and, and achieved a lot there. Um, so I'm happy to see him get a second chance to play again and he is a great shooter. He averages 37.3% from the three-point line and that is definitely something that Lakers could benefit from uh, in the playoffs. Having someone who's consistent and could knock down a shot if needed. Um, I mean, he, he wasn't given the nickname for any, for any reason. Like, he can knock it down. And I think what's good about him, even though he would be playing behind Pope and Caruso, he has that veteran presence. Um, he's been in very high intensity games, championship games. So I think his experience will also give him a leverage and something that the maker could use. All right, Maka. Now, we know Bradley's minutes are expected to be mostly taken up by Caldwell Pope and Alex Caruso with Waiters and Smith providing depth while the mm -hmm. Lakers pursue their franchise 17th championship. Now, we know that Smith is ninth in NBA history with 288 career playoff three-pointers made while hitting 37% of his three-point shots. You know, he's fourth in the league history in NBA finals three-pointers yep. made. Now, in 2016, look, he and LeBron, they won the championship for um, the Cleveland Cavaliers, but then sadly, lost out in 2017 and look many NBA fans said that JR owes LeBron a ring do you think that is true yeah and I mean he had a big mistake late in one of those games I think people just tag him and we forget that just because a player makes a mistake or um, drops the ball in a game it doesn't take away from all that they have achieved um, and I think it's great that he's going to be back with LeBron. They had a great chemistry in Cleveland. And I do think this is a great addition for the team. Help them towards this championship. Whether he owes LeBron a championship, I don't know. But um, I definitely believe that his presence helped the team to, to make way and potentially that. All right, great. Now, Maka, just before I let you go, I need to know, who do you think is going to win the NBA championship this season? So, um, I'm going, you know, with the whole uh, Kobe passing and the Lakers in the limelight a lot this season, um, and with LeBron uh, and AD and all the additions that the Lakers have acquired this season, um, it has said to, that it makes sense for them to win. Um, and then now with J.R. Smith here, it would be nice to see them win, although I've had my money on the, I've had my money on the Bucks. Uh, so 
we'll see we'll see how that goes. But Milwaukee has been very consistent. Giannis leading his team, and I I expect them to get to that championship game. So if if I could say who I think it would be, I think it would be the Lakers and Milwaukee in the end, and we'll see how that goes. I, I would probably put my money on the game set though. All right, all right, great. Thank you so much for your time this morning, Maka. You're welcome. It's been all a right. pleasure. All right, please do stay safe. Thank you, you too.